Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we're going to do something I've always wanted to do. Let's climb inside one of the battleship's boilers. Uh, earlier today, I ended up in a fuel tank, um, which is why I'm already dirty, even though I haven't climbed into the boiler yet. Uh, so we figured, hey, if I'm already dirty, it's near the end of the day. Let's finally do this. Uh, so I have previously been inside a boiler on uh, USS Massachusetts. They had a lot of their stuff opened up and taken out, so it was relatively easy to climb inside. Uh, today, I'm going to try and use one of the intended access ports instead of one of the uh, areas where the burner goes in, and we're going to talk about what we see in there. So, uh, we'll get back to you after I've crawled in. You can see some really cool gearing up here from where the fuel nozzle goes in and uh, where you're adjusting the fuel and air levels. And uh, let's see if I can climb in any further. It's probably wider than a gun barrel, so I'm pretty sure we can do it. So now we are inside of boiler number three. This is uh, one of the Babcox and Wilcox M-type boilers, which uh, burns fuel, air at about 850 degrees to superheat boiler feed water up to 600 PSI. On New Jersey, they achieved the highest uh, shaft horsepower and the highest speed of any battleship ever built using these boilers right here where I'm inside of. So uh, there is still a fair amount of uh, soot here on the ground uh, from the, the fire that was in here. I can see the inside of the burners where, they, where the nozzles would be spraying fuel. Um, we can see the water tubes going up overhead here. And Behind me and what I'm standing on underneath of this soot is all of the fire brick which forms a lot of the insulation and you can see that this stuff has started to uh, fuse together from the heat. So every so often they had to come in here, I think I've heard every uh, 1600 hours of steaming a boiler, you have to come in here and replace all the fire bricks. Well, that's cool. Uh, you can even see where the light off rod would come through. Otherwise you can see the Scorch marks here on the fire brick, where there has been a fire burning in here. Uh, I seem to remember Massachusetts's boiler being flat in here, whereas ours, you can see it's uh, concave. This is the saturated steam side. On the other side of uh, this insulation and these water tubes is the superheated steam side. Uh, it's interesting, there are concretions. It almost looks like... Uh, Almost looks like uh, mussels or something on the underside of the ship, which have formed on the, on the water tubes. I'm not sure what uh, causes that. So for those of you who haven't been uh, watching the channel for all that long or haven't come out and visited the ship, uh, steam-powered ships, like an Iowa-class battleship, are powered by steam. Everything from the turbines that turn the propellers and make electrical power to the kettles in the galley and the radiator in the captain's bathroom and the ship's whistle are at all powered by steam made in the ship's boilers. So like I said earlier, you're taking boiler feed water, which is even more refined than drinking water. Uh, the ship's evaporators are making that. Um, and you're taking fuel oil. Battleship New Jersey burned two different types of fuel oil during her career. Uh, originally Bunker C uh, during World War II, which was pretty standard, but by the 1980s she used the more refined stuff that the rest of the fleet used, uh, which is Navy Special Fuel Oil, uh, which is more of like a marine diesel. So, uh, 
The boiler feed water comes out of the deaerating feed tank, which removes non-condensable gases, and it comes into the boiler in these water tubes all around me. At that point, it is as pure as they can make it, so that when they boil it in the steam, there isn't a whole lot of other stuff left in the water tubes. All the salts and minerals and things that uh, humans actually like to drink, the electrolytes, uh, so we don't want those in the boiler. So we're, we're using the evaporators to super refine that out. Even other gases besides the uh, H2O steam uh, have to be removed. So that's the deaerating feed tank. Comes in the boiler. It is heated above us in the economizer as it comes in. Then it comes into these water tubes and it's heated into saturated steam. At this point, it's not fully dry. There's still some moisture in it. And if we were to shoot this at 600 PSI into our turbine blades, the water droplets would be hard enough to damage the blades at that speed. So it goes next door into the superheated side. We've got five burners here spraying fuel into the saturated steam side. There's another four burners on the other side making, saturated, uh, making superheated steam. So that heats it up to 850 degrees. At that point, it's 99% uh, dry steam, there's en enough of the moisture removed that we can now shoot this into the turbine blades. So it goes over to the turbines, spins those blades, uh, whether it's making electrical power in the ship service turbo generators, we've got eight of those, or uh, going into the turbine to make propulsive power, the main turbine unit. So we've got uh, four propellers, so we've got four engines. First, the steam goes into the high pressure turbine, uh, usually gets in there around 535 PSI and uh, usually uses up power until it's at about 60 PSI. At that point, it transitions over to the low pressure turbine and uh, uses the rest of its energy spinning more blades there. Uh, these send two shafts into the gear reduction box, which mates them up through a system of gearing into a single propeller shaft coming out the back of the ship. It also uh, reduces the RPMs but increases the torque so that the power transmitted into the propeller shaft and the propeller is enough to push a 57,000 ton warship, in this ship's uh, case, 35.2 knots. At that point, the steam is at zero PSI. Beneath each of the turbines is a condenser. So the condenser is pulling something like a negative two atmosphere uh, vacuum that just sucks the dead steam down into more water tubes. And then we're using holes in the bottom of the ship uh, called sea chests that are just taking uh, cold seawater and then running that over the boiler feed water that is dead steam in the uh, water tubes. The heat exchanger changes uh, the dead steam back into boiler feed water, it cools it enough. The now hot seawater goes back out a second sea chest back into the ocean, and the water, the feed water, can now be pumped via steam-powered pumps uh, back into the deaerating feed tank to remove the non-condensable gases, and then comes back in the boiler. So it's a, a continuous cycle. Why is this particular boiler and the other ones on Battleship New Jersey important? Um, because while the Iowa-class battleships were designed to make 33 knots, during World War II, uh, at their full load weights, none of them made more than 31 and a half knots of speed. Um, that's not uncommon for ships to be well below their rated speed at a wartime uh, loadout. Uh, they, they didn't really have times to do proper sea trials because they're trying to get these out into the war. Battleship New Jersey was the lightest battleship ever deployed in a war when she sailed for Vietnam. At that point, all the World War II era electronics had been removed, the anti-aircraft guns had been removed, and none of the more modern 80s stuff had been added. So since Battleship New Jersey was the only one reactivated in Vietnam, and since uh, she was already the lightest one because she doesn't have an extra armored conning tower like level like Iowa, and she doesn't have the extra three and a half inches of armor on her bulkheads like, New, uh, like Missouri and Wisconsin, uh, her extra lightweight combined with her light weight going to war and the fact that she just got out of dry dock meant that when New Jersey ran her trials 
in 1968, uh, she managed to get up to a speed of uh, 35.2 knots at a little bit north of 212,000 horsepower. It's more than 54,000 horsepower per engine, um, making her the fastest battleship of all times. So now we're in the superheated side of the boiler. Wasn't originally going to climb in here, but it was different enough we decided to anyway. Uh, most importantly, it's a lot cleaner. It may just be they cleaned this out better when the ship was decommissioned. Uh, but we've also heard that maybe they didn't run the superheated side if they weren't going at full speed. So this may well be indicating that the saturated steam side gets a lot more use than the superheated side. I'll have to look into that some more. Uh, in this side, you are able to see the fire brick, which is this one I'm sitting on, completely covered in soil on the other side. Uh, and that's the whole reason why there's this access port that uh, is almost big enough for a curator to climb inside of. Um, it's so that you can send the smallest guy who works in the room in uh, to clean or to swap out the fire bricks, to reline the inside of the boiler periodically. So um, another interesting thing in here, the uh, outboard bulkhead, the one that is on the far side away from the um, saturated side over here, has uh, what looks like a corrugated metal cover over the uh, water tubes, which has those uh, concretions or whatever on it, which may indicate that it's supposed to be there. So I'm going to have to do some more research into that too, if it's some impurity in the metal working its way out, or if it's designed to be there. Uh, maybe it gives a grip for if you are putting uh, a, a uh, concrete. concrete or and a brick onto that as insulation. And maybe that's just part of the difference in here that they were in the process of rebricking this when the ship was decommissioned. That's why it's cleaner. That's why we've got this exposed side. Not entirely sure. I'll stick my head in some other boilers at some point in the future and we'll update this video. So that is the inside of the most powerful boiler on the fastest battleship ever built. Uh, this is definitely top 10 dirtiest I've ever gotten, uh, working on the battleship at least. Uh, well, where's somewhere you want us to climb into next? We'll leave it down in the uh, description below. There's also a link in the uh, description down below for one of Massachusetts's boilers we got to climb into uh, about 18 months ago which was a slightly smaller type of boiler since those ships were not designed for the same speed as the Iowa's. But uh, you can also check that out if you like this video. Uh, otherwise, Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other viewers and uh, businesses. So we really appreciate the support you guys give us, and there's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to help us out. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so that more people find about our channel and the museum. Thanks for watching. Yeah, I don't think I'll be wearing these pants uh, on my ne next work day. <laughs>